So today we're talking about algorithms, and I wanted to stop and really look at that word carefully together uh, because this is, on some level, one of the core concerns of computer science as a field. So computer science as a field, really, you know, and our exploration throughout the rest of the semester, fundamentally concerned with two core conceptual topics, not just programming, not just building stuff, but deep conceptual concerns. One is how to solve problems. We refer to those solutions as algorithms, and there's a whole field of computer science, and one of the main concerns of the field is how do we solve problems using computers? We have these incredible machines, how do we put them to use? The second concern is how do we structure data? So that's something else that we'll be talking about the rest of the, the, rest of the semester. But let's today uh, just look at the algorithmic component of this. Um, so, you know, I, I put up here the Wikipedia definition of the word algorithm. Um, and so the first thing you'll notice is that it talks about problem domains. And below that, I've posted what I think is really cool, which is uh, data collected by the Google Books project about the use of algorithm over time. So this is not a new word. Uh, the, the term algorithm goes back a long time, but you'll see that the usage of algorithm really starts to jump up right in the sort of late 1950s, early 1960s, as people start to use computers and talk about how to do things with computers. Um, it's also interesting, you see little, little, little peaks and troughs recently, which probably my theory is that that first peak that we're starting to climb up to again corresponds to kind of the first dot-com boom, which many of you, uh, let's see, were you alive then? Maybe, um, probably not. Um, so you may not even remember this, but you know, there was a lot of excitement about the web in the early aughts. And some of that sort of came crashing down and there was a lot of concern that computer science as a field was dead. And of course, that's ridiculous because this is, computers are the most exciting thing people have ever built. But anyway, so part of algorithm is this domain connection, right? The connection between algorithms and computer science. So then we see a finite sequence of well-defined computer implementable instructions. Okay, so a couple of important things there, finite. An algorithm always has to consist of a finite set of steps, right? Um, you know, if I'm trying to tell you how to do something and I give you a list of steps that's infinite, I really haven't described how to solve the problem because you'll never be able to complete it, right? Um, computer implementable. So this, again, ties us back to computers. An algorithm is something that a computer can perform. Um, and on some level, when we solve problems using computers, we don't always solve them in the same way that a human would because what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to get the computer to do the work. We're gonna to have to find a way to translate what we want to happen into the types of operations that computers can perform, which you are already familiar with. You take, you know, storing and manipulating data, making simple decisions and repeating stuff. That's it, really. Those are the basic computer capabilities. So if we want them to solve a problem, we've gotta figure out how to express that problem as a combination of those, those actions. Um, then it says algorithms are always unambiguous. And that's another really critical component of this definition. And ambiguous computers do not do ambiguity. Fundamentally, computers are the most literal uh, being that you will ever interact with. And this is the source of a great deal of frustration when we interact with computers, when they don't do what we want, because we think, you know, why don't they understand what we're trying to ask them to do? Humans are great at understanding each other. If I tell you, you know, go to the store and pick up some milk, you're like, okay. You know, there's a great deal of ambiguity in that set of instructions, right? What store? How do you get there? What milk? What's milk? How do I, uh, what kind of milk? You know, but humans are okay with that, right? Because you're probably going to figure out, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out which store to go to. I'll figure out, oh, I usually buy 2% milk or whatever. Um, and so a, a, a human can deal with that. A computer will never be able to follow that set of instructions. There's a funny video that you can find online of, um, I think David Malin used to do this in CS50 where he would um, give people some instructions about how to make a peanut butter sandwich and tell them to follow them as if they were a computer. Uh, because typically when we write down things for humans to do, we don't specify them at the, at the, at the level of unambiguity, unambiguity that a computer would need. Right? We have to be very, very specific and very precise. And on some level, learning how to program effectively is really about learning how to do that. You will know how to solve most of the problems that we're going to talk about solving in this class. What you won't know how to do is get the computer to solve the problem. All right, so unambiguous. 
Um, and then you can see all the different ways in which algorithms are at work in the world, performing calculations, processing data, making decisions, automated reasoning, and other tasks. On some level, everything that a computer does is an algorithm. We don't always talk about everything that a computer does as an algorithm, but computers are on some level always executing some type of algorithm. Sometimes the algorithms are simple, sometimes they're highly complex and incredibly sophisticated, but that's sort of all that computers know how to do, is perform a series of steps that the programmer has told them to execute. Once you learn how to do that, you'll unlock all of their incredibly powerful capabilities.